One great question I got asked about many worlds is if many worlds is true and every time you do a measurement, you and everything else that was measured um, get split into two copies of yourself, essentially, then how on earth is energy being conserved? The thing is, this is a problem not just in many worlds, but in quantum mechanics in general. And it just is sort of like writ large by many worlds because the kind of things that are going into superposition are much, much larger, like yourself. So you obviously have much more mass than an electron. But it's just as egregious if an electron was to split into two and therefore make two copies of itself, doubling its mass. That's also not energy conserved. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I think about this problem, but I just want to put it out there that I think other physicists have different solutions to this. Um, and some people actually just don't seem to really think it's a problem at all. So I'm just going to explain what my opinion on this is. Like I said earlier, it's just as egregious if an electron splits into two copies of itself as if a human did. So right now we're going to take as our example something that's a little bit more in the middle. And it's a tardigrade. You may have heard of these little creatures. They have this like weird hole in their face. I don't know. The reason why I'm using tardigrades as examples is because they are the largest multicellular organism that has been put into quantum superposition. They're not that small. They're actually kind of big. Uh, like they're kind of on the order of about one millimeter. So honestly, like pretty big. So I think it was pretty surprising that something like this could be put into a superposition, but apparently it can. We're going to use these as our example because they're small, but they're not that small and real experiments with them have been done. So all of this is feasible whether you believe in many worlds or just regular quantum mechanics. The experiment that we're going to do with our poor little tardigrade is to throw it at a wall where the wall has uh, two openings that are big enough for the tardigrade to go through. And the question is which of these two slits did the tardigrade go through? The actual experiment that they did with these things uh, was actually a lot more impressive than this double slit setup. It was this like entangling operation, which was really, really cool. But I think that this one's easier to think about. And given that the other one was possible, I think this one is also feasible, but what do I know? Anyway, if the creature was to go through this slit here, then we will say that it is in the state up because it went through the up slit. Whereas if it were to have instead gone through this one, then we'll say that it was in the down slit. The thing with quantum mechanics is that if you do it right, you should be able to get a superposition of the object going through both of these at the same time. In that case, we could say that the object was in a superposition of having gone through both. So far in these videos, I've been dropping off the factors, but I'm just actually going to put these here for a second because I think it's actually a little bit relevant to this discussion. So here, the two coefficients are equal, which means that this split into two equal parts. Now, what's going on here? If the tardigrade is going through both of these things, like what's happening to it? I mean, it can't be splitting into two. It's an, it's an object that's alive. Like if you split it into two, then it's not gonna be uh, a, like a living creature at the end of this experiment. So does that mean that there's two copies of it? That's what this might suggest. And uh, yeah, I have heard some physicists talk about this in a way where like they kind of imply that that's what they believe, that there really is like two different worlds one where the tardigrade goes through the up slit and one where it goes through the down slit. And it's okay, energy is sort of conserved anyway, because when you think about the total energy, you just have to like sort of uh, weight the energies by the factors. And then, you know, there's half of the weight here, half of the weight here. And so then the total mass is like weighted by those factors. I think that's a kind of weaselly way to get out of this. I mean, if there are literally two versions of this thing, then there should be twice the mass. I, I don't feel like you can just kind of get around it by saying, well, we're just going to count the mass in different ways depending on these coefficients. Here's my current view on things. This wave function, which I'm just going to call psi, which is like in quantum mechanics, the standard way of how you keep track of the state of an object. My solution is that this wave function isn't the object, it's the state of the object. 
what does that mean? So I guess in this example, it would mean that our buddy here exists and is real and has mass. But this wave function is describing the state of that object. The state of that object currently is the state of both having gone through the top slit and the bottom slit, but there's still only one of that object. And so I guess this is like a kind of funny distinction between these two things. So this like object is real, the wave function is like the thing that's talking about the possible states that that object could be in. But I think this gets even weirder when you start looking at other examples. Suppose that we have this beautifully illustrated uranium atom. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, uranium can decay into a bunch of other things. Uh, one possibility is for it to decay into thorium and uh, helium. Quantum mechanically, it is in a superposition of both having not decayed and decayed. That means the state of the uranium is that it is uranium or it's thorium plus alpha particle. But going back to what I was saying earlier about like the object being the real thing and the wave function being just the state of that thing, that doesn't quite work here because you can't just say, oh, the uranium is the real thing because one of the states is for the uranium to not even be uranium anymore. And so what you really should say is like, the constituent parts of the uranium are the real thing, or perhaps like even better is instead of saying it's the uranium, you should say it's the energy that could be uranium, but could be thorium plus helium. And so it's the energy that's in a superposition of doing various things. And so then the thing that's real in this view is just like the energy of all objects. And then uh, that energy is in a superposition of like possibilities. Its, its state is in various uh, configurations. Um, some of those configurations are like certain types of particles, but the energy <laughs> is the only real thing. Um, thinking about that <laughs> honestly makes me kind of upset. Uh, <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna end this video here. Thanks for your question.